Hey everyone, my name is Brittany and I am a former photographer who now looks at and digs into the user experience of products, applications, and systems that photographers might use to speed up their workflow and bring happiness to their lives. Today, we are jumping into Aftershoot's new Edits 2.0. This release has overhauled their user interface and promises to save a photographer time and energy when editing with AI. The AI-powered tool learns from the user's style or uses pre-built AI styles to dynamically adjust each image, making the editing process more efficient and tailored. To properly tackle this massive new update, I'll be breaking down the entire system into some bite-sized categories. We'll first be looking at the pricing tiers of editing with Aftershoot. After checking out the pricing, we'll be setting up a personalized AI profile. Then we will try out that AI profile by editing a set of images. And finally, as a little bonus, we'll be comparing what our AI profile edited versus what I delivered to the client. By looking at each of those parts, we should get a better idea of the Aftershoot Edits 2.0 system and if it will improve the editing workflow for photographers. I know there may be something that you feel I missed or wouldn't have done in the same way as you, and I totally respect that. This is the way I want to look at the system. If you have a different method, I fully encourage you to do your own experiments. Before we dive in, a quick heads up, Aftershoot saw my video where I reviewed their AI culling and reached out to me. They gave me access to Edits 2.0 in exchange for an honest review. They hopefully know from my previous work that I'm all about honesty, so no worries there. Let's not waste any more time chit-chatting, let's get to it with our first category, pricing. I love a good pricing page, and Aftershoot has a very full page of options, including a generous 30-day free trial so that you can play with this system and perfect your personal AI profile before committing to any one tier. Now, some of these tiers aren't going to interest us because they don't include editing, or they don't include the ability to make our own AI editing profile, so we will be disregarding these two. The tiers we're going to focus on are the Pro tier and the Max tier. For the Pro tier, you'll spend $40 a month billed annually, and you'll receive unlimited AI culling, unlimited AI editing, which includes AI cropping, straightening, and masking, and one personal AI editing profile. You can add more personal AI editing profiles for an additional $7 a month, but if you refine your personal AI profile by frequently training it on your editing style, the one profile should take you pretty far. With the max tier, you'll spend $60 a month billed annually, and you'll get everything from the pro tier, with the added upgrade to five personal AI editing profiles and the ability to have one license with two device logins. Personally, I feel like I would be more attracted to the $40 a month tier, not only because the cost feels more manageable, but also I feel like getting the one style to rule them all down pat would easily be doable. Now that we've covered the costs for editing with Aftershoot, let's check out how to get our own personalized AI profile in our next section, setting up a personalized AI profile. I do want to commend Aftershoot on their recent changes to their application. With the introduction of Edits 2.0, they have given their interface a little bit of a facelift that holds on to the original integrity of Aftershoot while also implementing new flows through the addition of new import, calling, and editing tabs, updates to the culling preferences menu that also acts as a key to the color and ratings, and a workflow pipeline so that users are always aware of where they are in their projects. Additionally, Aftershoot offers a variety of pre-trained AI styles from top creators, which is perfect if you're still discovering your unique editing style. They provide a 500 edits free option and the full version is available for a one-time fee with the money going directly to the creators, which is pretty cool. For our purposes, we will be creating our own unique AI profile rather than using one of the established styles. Initially, I was unsure if the process to train the AI would make sense for me or if I would need to use the tutorial videos. Spoiler alert, I did use some videos. The dashboard is packed with options, buttons, and a banner announcing a new feature. At first glance, I missed the button to get started with creating a new AI profile. Instead, I clicked on album, 
uploaded a Lightroom Classic catalog, and then the Aftershoot Edits menu popped up. It was fairly easy, but the even easier way is to simply click on the Get Started button or the Plus New Profile in the dashboard to begin. When setting up the profile initially, there's no indication of the number of images needed for training. However, if we go to the AI profile screen in our account details, we can see that 2,500 images are needed for training. If I'm missing where it mentions the image count elsewhere, I apologize, but this was the only place I could find it. It would be a nice addition to have an image reminder somewhere within the catalog upload area, just to make the user fully aware of what is needed by the system. Anyway, I do have the option to use Lightroom catalogs or Capture One catalogs. I like that flexibility as I feel like Capture One doesn't get the love that it deserves from outside platforms. I'm using two Lightroom Classic catalogs to train my profile, so I'm going to get those catalogs listed in the system and follow the tooltips that initially pop up. Aftershoot has great communication in their systems, and these tooltips just drive home that they want their users as informed as possible. With our catalogs now available, we can see there's zero images being registered. To get those images recognized, we're going to click on Apply Filters, and I'm just going to check all the options because I can't remember what I did and flagged in these catalogs. I'm going to do that with both of them and uncheck some of the folders like blog and not editing because obviously those don't need to be present in my training. We'll end up with 2,611 images to train our personalized AI profile with, which beats the 2,500 images they initially asked for. So we are ready to hit upload. With that going, it's now a waiting game for when our AI profile will be ready. Aftershoot does communicate with us when the training is complete via email. In case anyone is curious, from starting the upload to getting the email, it took one hour and 41 minutes, which for training the AI to match my unique editing feels very quick. I could take a long lunch, come back, and be able to have an AI ready to edit for me. Since we now have our AI all trained up, let's put this little dude to work with our next category all about running the AI. I have a set of 100 images from a single wedding that I'm going to be running our AI profile on. This set of images includes everything from getting ready in the morning to the send off at 10 p.m. A few quick details about the wedding day. It took place on a farm, so there were a lot of greens and a lot of warmer wood tones. The weather was perfect and the sun was shining for a good portion of the day, but we were popping in and out of the different spaces a lot. So the exposure is at times all over the place. With the different temperatures and the different lighting conditions, this image set feels like like the perfect one to see what our Aftershoot Edits 2.0 AI profile can do. With the images imported, we'll head up to the Edit tab. I do wish this informational bit down here didn't look like usable buttons. It threw me off for a second, but then I exercised my ability to read and headed up to the Edits tab at the top of the dashboard. From here, I can set all of my preferences for editing, and I'm actually going to try using the cropping and straightening just to see how the AI does with this. I'm setting the crop to loose because I don't want the AI to get too croppy. And I'm also going to toggle the AI masking and choose subject mask with edits. This feature isolates the subject from the background and applies some automated edits to enhance it, allowing for precise adjustments while keeping the background untouched. Now that I have all of the images I want to edit selected and the options ready, we will click edit and the processing will start. There is a progress bar, percentage of completion, and a countdown. So again, there's a lot of great communication from the system while we wait. Initially, the system started off saying 12 minutes to complete, but that quickly dropped and the final amount of time that it took the system to edit was three minutes and 46 seconds. Not too shabby. Just under four minutes to edit 100 images means I could potentially get a portrait session out the door in just under an hour. None of the edits populate within the Aftershoot application, and that's because once the edits are done, Aftershoot will easily be able to open up the edited images within your application of choice, either Lightroom or Capture One. Since I'm a Lightroom Classic user, that's going to be our application, and it will immediately bring up our Lightroom import screen, 
where we can make any file handling adjustments and then hit import. With our images now in Lightroom, we can see the edits that our Aftershoot AI profile made. And these are pretty great for an initial AI profile run through. I am incredibly impressed. I uploaded just over 2,600 images for the AI to learn from, and this is its first ever edit test. I'm excited, but I also think it's good to note that if you're thinking AI is going to make it so that you never have to edit again, you're going to need to reevaluate some things. Aftershoot's system and most of the AIs out there that genuinely want to positively impact the world are going to be more time savers, not a complete solution. We can see that in this next category where we're going to be honing in on how the AI compares to what I originally delivered to my clients, as well as the original roles. For this face-off between the manual edits versus the AI edits, I have marked my delivered images in green and the AI edits in blue. I also have my rolls here that I'll mark in red. Just at a quick glance between my manual edits and my AI profile from Aftershoot, we can see that the AI did a pretty great job in terms of correcting exposure. This area that the bride was getting ready in was massively dark and overly warm. So the AI definitely had its work cut out for it in terms of adjustments. And it actually matched what I delivered really well. As we get more into bridal portraits and outdoor spaces though, I start feeling like the images are a bit too cool for my liking. I'm also a little worried that my eyes are playing tricks on me with the blue label, so I am going to turn the labels off and just use the star ratings. So now three stars are my Aftershoot Edits 2.0 profile and two stars are my manual edits. The AI processed images are still definitely on the cooler side, and I'll chat more in a bit about how we can adjust the profile. But first, let's look at some more of the images. Remember how we toggled cropping and straightening? The AI did a fabulous job automatically recognizing my preferences for cropping and producing balanced crops. I chose for the AI to be a bit looser with the cropping, and as I was looking over a lot of these images and seeing the skew on some of the rolls, it was such a relief to see that the AI already worked its magic and got me a great crop and straight image. Manually straightening is such a tedious process sometimes that if a different system can solve that tedium for me, have at it. The other feature I made sure to toggle on was the subject masking and edits. This total time saver. Check it out. I love this image of the bride and groom walking together. And after adjusting the overall image, I'm still finding that I want the bride and groom to pop a little more, which because I applied subject mask with edits during my setup phase in the aftershoot interface, each image has the subject's mask. So I can quickly go into the masking area in Lightroom and make extra adjustments to the subjects. For this image, I'm going to take what the AI already started for me and just boost the exposure a little bit on them. This AI masking feature alone has totally blown my mind. It's fabulous and saves me so much time. Knowing that the system only took three minutes and 46 seconds to process and masked all of the subjects in every single photo I ran through it, I can't even accurately put into words how this makes me feel. It honestly makes me kind of dorkily tear up a little bit. Of course, there are some moments where the AI didn't register that the bride was a subject and therefore didn't mask her, but of the 20 or so photos that I checked the masking on, only two had that issue. And one could argue that the bride's hair blocking some of her face made it difficult for the AI to pick up that she was a human subject. It does happen, and the fact that it happened so rarely does make it easier to move past. If you're not into having the AI mask and make adjustments for you, there is also the option in the Aftershoot Edits interface to only do subject masking. Still a massive time saver and leaves you in full control of the adjustments. I will say my aftershoot edits profile got me a large portion of the way there with finalizing my images. And once I make some refinements while also continually training my AI, I'll have a profile that gets the job of editing done quicker and quicker. Speaking of making refinements and adjustments to our AI profile, we know from our first run through of our profile that I'm not super jazzed about the lack of warmth. 
So in order to correct that and get my Aftershoot AI profile closer and closer to my style, I'll need to refine it. Aftershoot allows for refinement in two ways. The first is through a series of sliders that you can drag or click up and down depending on your needs. They cover the gamut of sliders that we photographers generally work within, and it's a pretty easy way to make quick adjustments if you can immediately identify where your AI profile is falling short. The second way to refine your AI profile is to keep training it with more and more images. The more images you upload and train your AI profile on, the more it will learn your style and how you handle and make adjustments for certain lighting and area conditions. The AI is essentially learning from your sliders and metadata. So the more data you give it, the more it understands. Since I know where my profile fell short with the edits on this wedding, I am going to refine the temperature as well as continuously train it. I've got all of these edited images just hanging out and I might as well use them to help my AI profile get closer to a one-click solution. To bring this review to a close, Aftershoot continually impresses me with its focus on helping photographers streamline their business. Did my personalized AI profile nail my editing style on the first go? No. An AI might never fully replicate that. However, Aftershoot's Edit 2.0 aims to bring us closer to a one-click fix, saving time and allowing us to focus on what truly excites us. Personally, I used to spend about 15 to 20 hours to edit a single wedding, and then I started outsourcing, which saved me time, but it took about two weeks to get my images back. And then I'd have to spend another five or six hours making adjustments to what the editor did, because they also weren't hitting my style head on. While human oversight is, and in my opinion, will always be necessary for AI, Aftershoot's Edits 2.0 has the potential to take my average wedding editing time from 15 hours to two or three hours and completely negate the waiting two weeks to get images back. That time savings alone can open up incredible opportunities to take on more creative endeavors, explore other business ventures, or just have more quality time with loved ones. Ultimately, if Aftershoot's Edits 2.0 can introduce more time for fun, isn't it at least worth checking out just a little bit? Thank you so much for tuning in to this review and walkthrough of Aftershoot's Edits 2.0. Have you used the Aftershoot system to either call your work or edit faster? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in trying out Edits 2.0 and seeing how it might impact, improve, and impress you, I do have a link in the description for you that will give you 20% off the Aftershoot system. Oh, also please feel free to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell to be alerted whenever I have a new video. I have a lot of AI investigations happening right now, so we'll be living in the artificial intelligence zone for a little while longer. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.